Good evening, everybody. Just before 11 p.m. here on the East Coast, my name is Lil Frex. This is my co-host, Kevin. We've just watched the NBA Finals Game 2, Celtics versus the Mavs. We thought the Mavs might be able to turn this series around, but, you know, look, I'll say, Mavs came out to a very, very strong start. A lot of Kyrie sucks chance. He combated that very well by putting up some points. Things were looking good. Luca was powered by Miller High Life, just pushing through, putting up a good performance. Sleepy start for Tatum. I think he didn't even score until maybe like the second quarter. Um, but, you know, despite Luca putting up a triple-double tonight, uh, the Mavs ended the half 51-54. Peyton Pritchard hit that buzzer beater end of the third quarter. That was awesome. I was hoping it was going to come down to like a three-point game and that was going to have been the uh, the difference maker. But that was an awesome well, moment. I mean, it pretty it almost did. That, that last – play where I think Kyrie passed in and to Gafford and he went up. I thought there was a foul on that. That should have been a, at least two shots and that could have cut it to two. It would have been yep. much different with the last minute of the game if they called that foul. It looked clearly like a foul. There's no way you can have that much momentum in those three bodies moving, but they didn't call it. I agree. Like the, And those last few minutes, it really felt like it was possible for the Mavs. I mean, they and went then- on a 9-0 run late, I think. <laughs> It felt possible, and then just got away from them. That uh, I think that Derek White block was what sealed it. Yeah, and Brown was with them, but that's where I thought the foul was. It looked like a push in the back, and if they call that, I mean, Dallas could have stole the game. But overall, but, very good well, performance by Boston. Amazing performance by Boston. I would say, honestly, biggest winner of the night, just the Boston camaraderie and how they operate as a team. Yeah, I'd say team defense. Yeah, I would team agree. Team defense. I think, I think yeah. Game one, they had good defense. Game one was good defense, but I think this game showed that it's legit. Like you could, after adjustments, you come out and you still lock down. Yeah. And I was texting with um, my brother, and he's he came he gave a good point where it seems that their strategy, which now that I think about it, it it's a good theory, is that uh, they are letting. Luca play hero ball in the beginning of the game. They're letting him carry the team and they're putting like full court press defense on him and they're double teaming him until he gets tired out. Uh, so he doesn't have gas in the fourth and it kind of played out that way. That's a really smart text that you got from your brother. Let me read you a text that I got from my brother. Uh Oh, he looks hungover again. Talking about <laughs> Luca. <laughs> and then he says, maybe he watched the Boondock Saints and took it too literally as Boston behavior. <laughs> I don't. I still don't get the narrative. Look at Luke. Yeah. He's locked in. Look at him. He was like, he was locked in tonight. He was locked in tonight. He was. I mean, look, he was downgraded to questionable before the game. In all the warmups, he's like holding his chest. They said um, thoracic contusion, basically like a chest pain, and we all know that's caused by two and a half Papa John's pizzas. I, you know, we also didn't talk about is that Kristaps came up limping at the end of that game. I know. and That's big. That is actually serious. If that's something serious, then uh, that's good for the Mavs going home. I agree. The tides could totally turn because they took him out. He didn't come back in in that fourth quarter. Yeah. I mean, he was limping. He really didn't have any pop after that play. It was a weird, awkward landing. That if, if he's out, if bootstraps is out, Things could turn around for the Mavs, but I, mean, I don't know because Dallas, like I said, I still I still believe it's going to be two two at the end of four. I think Boston, like the Mavs, figured something out to make it a close game, and a couple there was a horrible turnover late with Kyrie and Luca. Yeah. A couple plays go different, you know, and if you're at home with momentum, I, I still think this is going to be a two two game, especially if Kristaps is out. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It just looks like to me, just watching two games of this, it just looks like six stars versus one. And how do you overcome that? Our big question last week was, will the Mavs make adjustments? Will the Dallas role players be able to step up? They did let Gafford in tonight, and he looked good, but he's not as good as Porzingis. P.J. Washington had a great night, but he's not as good as Derek White. You know, SOS, where's um, Tim Tim Hardaway Jr.? Where's that man at? They didn't didn't take our – Where's that man at? He was a DMP that did not take our advice. I mean, when you look at the box score and you see 17, 11, 13, 16 from the other four guys – but the bench, two points, four points, three points. Where is Tim Hardaway? Luca, Luca put up 32, 11, and 11. It's, yeah, it's, you're know. right. It's, it's 1v6 here. 
I mean, spectacular performance, triple double for the boy. But yeah, I he mean, doesn't have, he doesn't Kyrie have the help. Kyrie is my back to back loser. Yeah, on the I, night. I agree. He had some great plays, but I mean, they brought you in to be the superstar. You yeah, got to be. Not, he's not a difference maker. Al Horford is more of a difference maker so far in the series. What a big Al have tonight? Five points, seven. I'm just an points. Al Horford the thing, girl. The thing with all the Boston guys though is like they don't have their stats are good, maybe not crazy, but their hustle plays like they all have like five hustle plays each. Each of them made like really good defensive plays. No, like where you're like, wow, that notice. Yeah. Swung. I think that the Celtics all vowed to each other at the beginning of the season. We are getting this chip this year, whereas the Mavericks, they were like, oh shit. We got to the finals. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's there's, crazy, at least, bro. At least for the rookie and the the bench guys, that's what it seems like. I think. I mean, if they have to turn it around at Dallas, if if I mean, game three is a must win, obviously. Must win. If they lose, it's over. Uh, historically and statistically, it's over. So I would. It's safe to say I would take them game three. So I'm yeah. going. I'm I'm picking the maps. In game three. Okay, I'll tell that. We'll just keep big, losing. Big money. news. Big news. The bet is dead because we had Mavs game two. So the big oh. bet is dead. Stamp it. It's Stamp over. It. it didn't even last two games. Horrible. Horrible. But, uh, you know, that's what you get when you bet minus 9,000. Listen, honestly, this series. Well, I just said so... that's what you get when you bet plus two, plus yeah. 9,000. Exactly. When you bet plus 40,000 40, odds, listen, you're going to lose a few. Um, yeah. This game, I think this series has been so uninspiring in many ways that I have to bring up the WNBA. I mean, I watched a game today. Wait, can I can I have a sidebar and off yes. the court, uh, of course. Uh, observation? My favorite thing, this is something they they that always happens, is they'll mic up a player and then that game, that player is just talking like they do it normally, and you can tell they don't never usually talk. Yeah. And Jalen Brown was mic'd up tonight. And every time they would cut away, he was like giving all this motivational speak. And you could just see Jason Tatum kind of roll his eyes. And you're like, I doubt Brown talks like this all the time. Like right. none of them were responding to him. It just seemed like he was saying it just for the mic. And it wasn't even that bad tonight. I've seen really bad ones in the past where like they forced themselves to be these like leaders of the team. Oh, yeah. And, and everyone's like, wait, what? Yeah. Just Jason Tatum just literally looking. and was like, oh, OK. Like didn't even okay. respond. It was, it was pretty funny, but uh, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown arrived at the arena in matching outfits. I got to see it. It was, it was bad. I just wanted to bring up quickly though. Um, Caitlin Clark real quick left off the Olympic team. Um, Here's my stance on this. She does not care. Everyone's making it like all this drama going on with Caitlin Clark. Oh, they're pushing her, blah, blah, blah. She's like, that's sports, guys. People push each other. I watched the WNBA game today. Everyone was pushing each other. Psychotic out there. And then Caitlin Clark's like, I don't care. I didn't make the Olympic team. It's the hardest team in the world to make. It's it's a great to have something to work towards. Everyone else is just said. making, yeah. Everyone else is just making drama. She doesn't care. Yeah. I watched the New York Liberty game. I'm just going to put you on the player right now. Okay. Her name is John Quell Jones. She's the center for the New York Liberty. She's six foot mm -hmm. six hysterical dynamic Good. player and just very funny like anyway, Mitchell Kate... Robinson no 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 okay uh I, I didn't realize she was left off that seems like a horrible business decision by USA basketball yes it's uh, one of the worst business decisions I've ever heard but from a player standpoint everyone's like it's so disrespectful she's the biggest player in the I, world right I, now it's I like, can understand it more from a player standpoint than I can from a business standpoint. 100%. Like fine, she's a rookie. There's a lot of people who have put in way more like into it and they're due and they're due for that that experience, especially as Paris. I'm sure it's a hot ticket. I'm sure a lot of the uh, veteran players put their names in that normally wouldn't. Mm -hmm. It's like in the NBA, like no one played when it was in Brazil, but now it's in Paris and all of a sudden you get all Steph. of a sudden LeBron's like, get um, the boys. We're, yeah, so we're now all gonna LeBron go. wants to play basketball. So now Paris. LeBron's interested, but LeBron's like, now Clark. he's interested. Got it. Yeah. It's uh, but no, I mean, I think that's, that's gotta be one of the worst business decisions of all time, especially of all trying, time. You know, because, trying to grow because, women's basketball. Because that would have been probably the biggest event. Here's a question is yeah. us women's basketball as dominant as us men uh us women's soccer has been traditionally like they win we go gold all the time, they do, all the time. They do. Constantly. Yeah. so i think yeah. this year people are really 
people are going to be locked in this year that I think it's going to be exciting. Like we're going to cover women's basketball and men's basketball. For Here's the, the real bet. Do you think Caitlin Clark shows up in Paris and sits like courtside during the game? No. I, I think she does. No. I would bet you she did she's, side bet on that. She's going to be at Planet Fitness all summer doing heavy lifting. Okay. You know, there's a no, there's no lug alarm. In she's going to be doing heavy lifting. She even said, she's like, I need to bulk up. I'm in the big yeah. leagues now. I'm getting pushed around. That's what happens to rookies. I've always been a little shrimp. And she's like, she's Caitlin Clark is like unbothered. She doesn't feel like she's being treated poorly, what happens, but all the media is making this whole thing about it. We got to wrap it up. In a minute. What happens to the WNBA players when they go to the Olympics? Do they suspend the season? Well, that's true. It's in the middle of their season. It's the middle of their season. So do they just like it's only put it two on weeks. Hiatus? They must. Yeah, they must put it on hiatus. Put it on hiatus, right? That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Interesting no, yeah, to see uh, how that plays out. Yeah, we got we got to throw on some women's basketball games. Um, well, everyone's saying that um, Caitlin Clark has really put the WNBA on the map right now, but I have an alternative theory, and we'll end with this. I think really Brittany Griner getting locked up by Putin is what put the WNBA on the map. It's not a bad theory. I think both are true. Because all it is is brand awareness, right? Like I passively have been absorbing men's athletes just through my psyche for my entire life. I just know I never watched basketball until two years ago. I knew who yeah. LeBron James. You knew who they were. I know yeah. because it's just always around you. It's just they're just yeah. everywhere, right? Brittany Griner gets locked up by Putin. All of a sudden, I'm hearing the name Brittany Griner. I'm hearing WNBA, the team she yeah. plays for. And I think that started it. And then Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and that other chick, all three of them being like cool girls is what really blew it up. Anyway, you, go even deeper, it. you could go even deeper conspiracy theory that they're all the refs are calling all these fouls and like there's all this pushing and shoving going on just to like have things to talk about, like to spice and, up. And you know? I support that because this is all narrative driven. We just want narratives. And the yeah. WNBA right now is giving us, I think, better narratives than we're seeing in this men's finals we're getting no narrative from this uh men's finals yeah i mean when you have flat play like we're seeing uh it's really hard, it's really hard to build any it's, kind of excitement this series is flat earth play it's kind of, it's very much like when lebron went to his first finals you're seeing it with luca in his first finals where you know he's the best player and you know like he's brought them there but right. this means nothing when you're playing a really good team and exactly. so it's kind of, kind of boring Six versus one, kind of boring. All right, yeah. we're going to pick it back up. Next game is Wednesday. Thank you guys for joining us. Like official us, drop Mavs. a comment. Official pick, Mavs. We're every every week, we're going to go official pick. Mavs. I mean, this is it. This is the last time. If this they is... lose this, then it's over. But uh... If they lose next week, we don't even cover the series. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. Mavs, <laughs> win. Mavs, win. Mavs win, series goes 2-1. We're out. All right, dude, I'll talk to you. Later. Oh,